Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're having a great Wednesday evening. I know I am. It's been great. We've got a contest this weekend. So I've been bouncing back and forth, getting my trailer ready and getting everything done for that. So looking forward to this evening and going over our product that we're going to review. Um, got a nice trivia question. Um, hope everybody's ready for it. Um, time will tell, you know. We gave an easy one last week, um, and so no, this week might not be easy, but you know, it is if you know the answer, I guess, is the right thing. Um, let's just get started. I'll do our product review, then we'll come back and we'll get started on the um, live stream, answering questions, and hopefully my product review will entice you to think of something that will help do it. But before we get started is to make sure that you like this uh, YouTube page and you have subscribed so that you'll be getting notifications for when we do go live. Um, without further ado, let's just get started. Welcome everybody to a product review. And today we're going to do our industrial strength, which is our digital laser thermometer. That's right. And we're going to start with the outside. What we have is it comes in a cardboard box, really nice, beautiful display on the front. You can see it exactly as to what you're going to get inside. A nice um, wood logo or lo um, wood background with the flames and the logo on top. That pretty well is the way that most of our supply items um, look like. This side, it just simply says what it is. And a brief description on the back um, of some of the features. Um, obviously, it's not going to be all the features, but there's a few of the features there. And it does state down here at the bottom um, that it is made in China. And we're going to turn around. We have our UPC code there and another logo. And then nothing on the end. Now let's just open it up and let's show you how this comes packaged to you. We're going to open that up. And like I said, it's cardboard box. The product does come in a bubble wrap product package, and inside the box is a full set of instructions, and it's a very thorough instruction. Um, there is a whole lot here, um, 12 pages of a lot of reading, um, and it explains everything you can imagine um, about the product. Um, we're going to open this up, and this does come without batteries and that has to do with shipping the companies that we use for shipping from everything from coming overseas to shipping to the end user the batteries classify it hazardous so for the type of battery that it uses um, so this will not come with batteries that is something that you will have to get yourself okay um there's a description on the side so you can um Remember it at all times. Here's the LED um, uh, screen on the back. And there is just the standard stuff on the side. And that. here's going to be the trigger that you'll push up front. And this is where it reads. And that is a laser. You'll see the red laser here in just a moment. Um, the battery compartment is right up front. And as you see, it is two AAA batteries. And we've already got them installed to speed this up. All right, how you turn this on is you just push the trigger and that automatically turns it on. As you can see, it is a complete full color screen. I'm going to push it one more time and it'll shoot the wall behind me. And you can see it instantly gives you a, a reading of what that wall is. And there are several things on there. This E0.95, the 71.2 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a maximum and a temperature, and then this is um, where you can turn off the red dot when it's shooting or leave it on. The mode button is what you will push to make the changes, and then um, this is from Celsius to Fahrenheit and back and forth, and then there's arrows up here to change things up and down, and let's just do one of those real quick. We're going to hit this mode. We're going to hit it for, we're going to push it, I should say, for two seconds. And we're going to change this holding temperature down here. Let's see if you can see it changing. And not hold, I'm sorry, maximum and minimum temperature. We're going to, 
and how you get that's the minimum is 57 degrees and we've got it set at 67 and what that is is it will tell you the maximum amount at that time okay i want to hit the trigger and that takes it out of that okay and you can then move it if you hit the mode again we're going to move it around you see it changing different things fahrenheit to celsius um, that red triangle that's coming on and off up there, um, that will put the, the the red laser dot either on or off so you can see exactly where it's aiming, okay? Some people will turn it off because this can be used in areas with mirrors and things, and it could reflect back and get them. So the laser itself is has the ability to be, to be turned off. Okay, I'm going to shoot it real quick. And, oh, sorry. I've got it on Celsius. Let me uh, change this back so that we all understand what it is. I'll get it in a minute. All right. Now, this the one thing that's on the side that you need to be aware of is how this reads. Okay, this has a graph on the side, and how it reads the um, laser coming out is it's a circle coming out. Okay, and <coughs> pardon me, folks, I apologize. What it does is when it's coming out, it it comes out in a circle form, and it reads it in the minutes, I mean the seconds, according to where it's going. As it says right here, within inches of it, it reads it instantly, okay? And up to 12 feet, it takes one second. 36 feet, it takes three seconds. And 72 feet, it takes six seconds. And that will also determine um, uh, the, the possibility of the degree count as being accurate, okay? To where if you're checking a grate and you can see it turned off, it's in, uh, 30 seconds and it shuts off automatically to save the battery. If you're checking a grate and you're standing about three foot from it, the circle might be about that big, okay? So you may say, well, it's not accurate because I keep getting different readings. Well, your circle will be moving around your grate, okay? So one part of the grate might be different. So it has an instant average to where if you was to get within two foot of it, it will get a more accurate uh, count of the way it's reading. Um, I'm going to turn this back on. And then up here at the top, right there, you see this E and then it's all um, that going across. That is to change the type of metal or the surface that you're reading. And they're all listed in here as to what you can change it to. Aluminum, glass, cloth, um, brass, copper. And it has to do with the radiant heat that that metal puts out so that you can see the exact temperature of your fire source. So if you've got uh, grill grates, it's made of aluminum, you'd put in a 0.04 up here. And so it will change that because of the radiant heat of what aluminum puts out and give you the actual temperature of what your fire is versus um, a tablecloth. It's going to have hardly any radiant heat, so it will pick it up almost instantly and give you the accurate count. That is our la instant read digital laser uh, thermometer. You can find them on our site under our tools and grilling supplies. A lot of our retail stores do carry them, so go ask the manager and they will get you um, fixed up. All right, folks, that was kind of jumpy, um, in my opinion. Um, but a digital laser thermometer is in a very handy tool. This thing can be used from temperature, your temperature grates, uh, pizza stones, um, it, it can do the outside surface of your meat. Granted, it will not tell you the internal temperature, so don't don't expect that, okay? Um, but if you're just curious and you want to play around, I've got one of these, and I just like to see what sometimes the asphalt temperature is, and we'll hit it just to see. Um, 
Let's see. Let me get on. We'll answer a few of these questions over here. Grant, good evening, everybody. Grant, appreciate you logging in and joining the conversation. Thank you. Greg Klein, good evening, sir. Good evening. That's last week's winner. Let's see if he can double do double dip. Sugba, hello. Good morning, sir. We have Steve Day. Does the IR have any use on food? Yes, like I said, um, if you're checking, want to check the temperature of your water, uh, let's say you want to know what the uh, uh, sauce is, you can check the temperature of your sauce if you don't have a probe temperature. Um, but as far as food itself internally, it, it will not work. It will not work for temperature checking on the food. If you're wanting to know what the surface temperature of a steak is, absolutely. It'll give you that quick read surface. And that might help you if you're really into the charring and all that, and you want to know when to flip and, and all that, you can check just that immediate surface and know if you needed to flip it quicker or not um, for the next cook. But as far as for food, it's virtually impossible to, you, you can't check the internal temperature with this product. It will not read deep into it. It's only a surface Temperature reading equipment. Great question, uh, Steve. Great question. Greg Klein. I love using them on my Blackstone. Yes, um, this would be. That's right. I hadn't thought of a, a grill flat surface flat cooker like that. But yeah, Blackstone. It would be really nice. Then you can see your temperature zones where you might want to um, say you're cooking breakfast. Your potatoes might need to go so they can get cooked quicker or where uh, the constant temperature for um, flatjacks. That's no Oklahoma word for pancakes. Um, but yeah, absolutely would work great on a Blackstone. Great. Uh, Grant says, perfect for checking grill grates at an SCA competition. Exactly. That's what I was saying. And that's what I was talking about. You can change that to where it'll pick up the aluminum and then uh, take off the amount of radiant of what aluminum does. Um, and that's that's purpose purpose of having that feature. Not all have those features, but it's confined in a real nice, handy deal. Um, let's see here. Um, does anybody else use a laser um, digital thermometer? I know this is off track, but... My brothers keep this because they check tire temperature and track temperature. They drag race. So they use it all the time um, for that purpose. And I'm sure there's a lot of purposes that I'm just not aware of. Um, Greg, let's see what you say. We like to smoke thick steaks and then get the Blackstone up really hot and sear them Um for a nice crust, juicy smoke center and a crispy crust. That would be really nice. And that'd be handy to know where your hottest spots are. Um, then you could place your bone area, if it's a bone in steak, right over that area to finish that off. That way the bone gets just a little warmer and that will release the meat and make it more tender as far as a palate and cutting it off the bone. Um, which is a big thing. That's part of the reason of reverse searing being popular is that it raises that temperature up very consistent throughout the whole piece of meat. Greg, he's got another question. I just use it to check the playground equipment to make sure the kids won't get burned. Great one. That's absolutely right. So, hey, keep one in your RV for that very reason. If you're traveling around, I do like that. Let's see, Steve, I used it to check um, check for bad bearings on a car and utility rate. Bad bearings get really, that is a great note. You're right. I had not thought of that, but that would sure show up very quick. Great call there, Steve. I do appreciate it. Grant, my smoker has a double stack off, off of six shield, six shelves i apologize i'm gonna start all over my spoker has a double stack of six shelves vertically and i monitor the temp of all the various racks yes i 
knowing that is pit mastering. And that's exactly what you're doing there. And this could give you a very quick, easy read if you can place it directly on that particular rack. Great call there. I like that, Grant. I like that. I, and I really like Steve's thing with the, uh, from Al's Nest there, checking the bearings of a trailer. That is perfect. My um, wife uh, has one of these, and it's not black, but it's a medical, and they turn the laser off, and they tell people back in the COVID world, cover your eyes because of the cone effect, like I spoke of. They cover them, and then they would check. That's how they check the um, uh, your body temp to tell if you've got uh, running a fever or not. But that is basically the same thing. That's what this is. Let's see here. I, yeah, I. That's pretty well about all I got. I think they're pretty, pretty easy to understand and how to operate. Like I say, just push the button, and it comes running. You can sit back behind me there. Yeah. And I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to shoot this light right here, and let's see what it changes. Oh, I'm, look at that. 112.8. What a difference. Yeah. Versus right back there. Yep. See? So, anyway. All right. We're going to give this away. Obviously, without the batteries. I, I, I cannot ship the batteries in it. So you'll have to go get your own batteries. But a trivia question for the evening. <clears throat> you know, I'm in business. I'm trying to get people to follow us and build following, just like any, any of y'all that have a business, you know what I'm talking about. So my trivia question has to do with just that. Um, oh, let's see one more. I'm, that's right. I'm going to make you wait. We got one more question. Um, Steve says, great if you have a cat too, drives them crazy. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess that would do it. Uh, that is that would be a fun one. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're always doing little things like this and promotions, hence giveaways, to build following, okay? Well, this last weekend, which was Easter weekend, we had a great time with the family. And Sunday, I cooked all kinds of food. I cooked a turkey breast. I cooked a couple uh, sausage fatties, uh, two pork tenderloins, and then my trivia question. I cooked one other thing, and I posted on Facebook, on our Butcher Barbecue page, all day long, a picture and kind of what was going on to kind of help you understand cooking the product. I almost said it. Cooking the product of what it was um, and to let you kind of follow along, kind of see the temperatures, the times, what it would look like. This way you can kind of understand and maybe you want to cook one yourself this summer. So my trivia question is, what was it I cooked and what rub did I put on it? All one answer, first correct answer. So let's see what we got here. Grant is first one to jump in. Prime rib. Well, you got half of it. I knew someone would do that. And I figured it'd be trying to be a fast finger person, but we're trying to get also the product and the the bark. I'm sorry, I said it. <laughs> but Shigma. Already answered it. Prime rib and Texas bark. That is correct. I cooked a prime rib and Texas bark. Grant, dude, I'm sorry. You just jumped the gun but didn't have the whole answer. <laughs> Sugmer, I don't know if I have your info, but off air, shoot me a private message. You know, let's make sure you get I get your address so you can get this to you. But, <coughs> pardon me, still fighting that flu from a few weeks ago. Um, what I did was I put on there trimming it. Go back and look at our Facebook page, and you'll see, go back to Sunday morning, you'll see why I trimmed it. You'll see the rub we put on it. You'll see a picture with the rubs. You'll see the, um, the drum that I lit up, the temperature I was trying to run it at, putting it on, rotating it. I flipped it, took pictures, finished it up, 
Then I took pictures. I think they were finished in a pan. Then I believe I took pictures as I sliced in it. And I want you to know, I almost forgot that one. I had the whole fam family behind me and they were trying to get a hold of it. And I said, folks, I've got to get a picture of this. So, yeah, um, you'll see that as kind of a slideshow, but it's just, a, it's a, it's a post for each one. And it was more to get folks to kind of follow along and to, um, that way they can kind of learn about a prime rib because prime rib is expensive. We don't want to dis not cook one because it is expensive. I want to show you how easy it is. And don't kid yourself. You can flip that. You can go buy a chuck roast if you want to do one. You can buy um, uh, uh, an arm roast. You can buy a great big um, tomahawk ribeye. You can do so many different things. Just don't be scared to cook something um, that you're not familiar with. We've got just a few, few questions. Uh, Greg, yeah, you you were cracked, but you're just just a little bit late on that. Um, I got half of one. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll we'll send you the bubble wrap. How about that, Grant? I don't want you to feel left out. Greg says, nice job, Sug. But yes, very good, very good. Yeah, thank you, Sug. Like I said, get with me off air, private message. And that way we make sure we get the address. I'm, I, it seems like we might have it, but I don't really know for sure. But I want to make sure you get your product. I That's all I've got. Um, don't want to linger on just to, just rattling off. Um, I appreciate it. We'll be getting back to um, tasting and stuff of that um, here directly. I just wanted to get a few grilling tools in and out um, on the product review. And... You'll see on my private page, I got a whole box full here of a whole bunch of rubs. Guess what we're going to be having here? Hopefully, within five to six weeks, we'll have a handful of new rubs. That's what I'm wanting to hear. Anyway, that's all I've got. Um, one more quick. Um, Got to let these other folks win some to keep showing up. Greg, I love, I love it, I love it. Yep, I, I and we appreciate you doing that. Yeah, that we do. All right, folks, that's all I've got. Um, thank you very much, and Sugma, congratulations. Y'all have a great evening.